Hi everybody, in today's Tytopia tutorial we are going to take a look on how to create animations with parts and cameras. So in order to create this tutorial, let's have a look into our templates library because there are some really nice templates that are being created by the Tytopia team but also by users and we can just hone our skills and dive into those template files and see how other people create their scenes. And what we can do, we can also scroll down and find a suitable scene that we could animate. So we can also here filter by scenes or topics. So let's go to individual objects because we want to create an object animation. And I think one of the really good examples of animations could be one of those um, cameras that show an exploded view of the different lenses. So I think we'll dive into this template file and as soon as you click on a template file it will copy it into your workspace and you can tinker with it and create some awesome renders. So let's jump into that file. All right we are now in that file and be sure to name that file accordingly. So let's see camera animation and confirm that. So as you can see I think the the artist already put um, the lenses in an exploding view so all we have to do basically is to recreate the movement and put them back where they belong and that creates this movement of an explosion view which we are going for. At the same time also to add some dramatic effect or just more movement for your animation, we are also going to animate the camera. But first things first, let's have a look at the scene and understand it better. So let's move out of the camera into our free room camera and move around and see what we are working with. So this background here I want to change at least for the moment, at least for creating the animation. Um, because this environment here creates some good contrast, but I think for animating we need a more basic one. So let's go to our environments and then on in our studios, I think I'm going with the studio small 09. So let's create a new environment and then click on the studio that we want to use. Also, you can see that the model actually intersects with our floor, our ground, and we can either turn off ground shadow, which then in turn makes our model fly in the air, or we can turn on ground shadow, go into our outliner, and then in our model group, our handheld camera, we can um, move upwards and then snap to ground. And that makes the camera actually stand on the floor. Either way works fine. I'll do it like this and put the camera on the floor. All right, now we're ready to animate. So for our animations, we need to activate the timeline. So go on the right upper hand side, this small little star icon activates the timeline down here. Let's create our animation. One more thing, I think the environment in the background may be a bit um, annoying. So we can also just go ahead with a single color and we can also change that to a neutral gray in order to see the highlights and everything. So this is quite a nice environment to work with and animate or even create uh, materials because it's quite neutral. Now in our outliner we, we can see our model group which is the camera itself and then we have the body and the head inside the head there is the lens parts. So if we hold control and then click one of these parts, we'll jump into the single part. So um, just holding control and clicking on one of the parts selects this uh, singular element that will come in handy now with animating. By the way, I have my denoiser off in order to just see the outlines of the elements more clearly. If I have it on, it will in the first seconds get a bit blurry, so it's harder to select. 
And for the sake of animating, I can keep my denoiser off and I can select them, the parts more easily. So selecting the parts again, holding control and then select this ring element and then the outliner will uh, jump onto or jump into that object. And down here we can see our position. And um, next to the position in X, Y and Z axis, we have the reset button. And then next to that, we have our keyframe button, which we need now. Make sure that you're on frame zero. And then we are going to add a keyframe here in this position. Next, we want to move along the timeline and I'm going to frame 30, which is one second because we are in uh, 30 FPS, 30 frames per second. And then move the part into the casing. And the last step is to add another keyframe. And that is already one animation done. Now, since we have to repeat that four times, what I'm going to do is move the timeline to frame zero, control select the next lens and add a keyframe. And I'm, I'm going to just stay in frame zero and repeat that for all the other lenses. Add a keyframe, control select, add a keyframe, control select, add a keyframe. And now we have our frame zero done. Now we can move along to frame 30 and repeat that, but we need to move then the parts into the casing. So move and then add the keyframe in order to create the animation. And then we're gonna repeat that. Control select move, add a keyframe, control select move inwards, add the keyframe, and then for the last one, control select and make sure it's all the way in and then add our last keyframe. All right, and that was it for the lens animation. So you can scroll down here between frame zero and frame 30 and you can see our explosion animation. And for our final step, we want to also animate our camera. So let's add a new camera which we would like to animate. So add a camera. So with our new camera, we can set our size um, that our frame should be. So um, the image ratio of 16 by nine, if it's landscape or one and one to one, if it's a square format, or even uh, nine by 16, if you're doing social media videos. So what I want to do is I would like to move the camera into the, the first position um, and then move it into our final position and then animate in between. So let's see what our first camera position should be. I think I would like to have something dramatic, like something from underneath here, for example. And also I think it should be quite close to the lenses because the lenses are quite small so i think the camera should be quite close to our lenses and maybe to emphasize the fact that the lenses are coming out and have some distance in between them uh, maybe also some sort of an angle to it and the next thing also i think the focal length itself should be quite far so quite um, long Let's go with something like 80 or maybe even 100. And that kind of just creates a little bit more of a flat image, which we then can counterbalance with some depth of field. So let's add depth of field and pick one of the lenses, either the first one or one of the middle ones. And that is our focal point. And then play with the f-stop in order to blur out the background. So maybe something like five or even eight. So I think this looks quite nice. And all the different settings that we want to animate, we now have to add keyframes to. So let us set the keyframe for the position, the rotation, also the focal length, because that could be changing, the focal distance and also the f-stop. So I think those things should be animated along our movement.
And now we'll go to our frame 30, which is one second in our timeline. And then we can move out and see what the final position of the camera should be. And I'm thinking something like this, where you can see the camera still quite close up, but the camera movement throughout this one second is not too much. As soon as we move the camera with some keyframes added, you can see the red outline of all the parts that are changed that have changed now since we did this movement and need um, new keyframes. Otherwise, the camera would reset and um, you're kind of stuck where we started. So let's first of all add the keyframes for the position and the rotation. And then we want to pick our focal point again. So let's click on our lens because that changed. So let's add the keyframe here. And then since we are quite far out now, the F stop of eight doesn't really add any um, background blur. I think I'm going to decrease the F stop in order to add, to still have some of the blurring in the background. So maybe of uh, f stop of two. So you can see here in the lower parts and here in the back, we still have some blurring. I think that will look nicer. And since that changed, we also have to add a keyframe here. And we did put a keyframe for our focal length. So we can also play and have some keyframes for the focal length. So for example, you could also have it zooming out if you want that. But I think I'm staying with the 100. I think that looks quite nice. It's, it gives us this depth of field and works well. All right, now let's check our animation. So we can, we can scroll down here in the timeline and see where we start and then where we end with. And you can see that the camera makes an automatic movement that we might want to change, but at least the endpoints and the beginning is perfect. So now we can move along the timeline and then change the position of the camera um, to our like. You can see here in frame 15, all the elements are moving out of the of the frame. So what we want to do is move them back with our middle mouse click in order to kind of keep the center of rotation, which is the lenses, fairly in the center. And then just add the keyframe for all the positioning and rotation. And then creates, you see, you can see down here, it creates some additional keyframe in the middle. And that just makes the animation go from the start here to this keyframe and then zoom out to our final position. The one thing you might want to change is also the timing. So this you can always select and hold control in order to select all these keyframes and move them along the timeline to a new position. And as well with this one, you can move that here and now the timeline is kind of stretched. So now our animation takes two seconds instead of one. All right, now let's jump back into our studio lighting that we had. We can change the rotation, make sure that the render background is lit the lighting environment in order to have some sort of background that moves along. We can change the rotation of that lighting setup. And you can see in the background there's some stuff happening. So I think that makes it a bit more interesting, but you can always also choose a different environment set or HDRI. And I think for this one, I would prefer this Pro Studio Metal and then just add that to the environment. And the one tweak I think I'll do is the color gradient for the background. Add a bluish tint to that background. I think that fits quite well to the overall lighting. And now I would just check um, all the frames separately, independently from each other, in order to make sure that the whole animation is lighted correctly. And I think it is. So when we end here, we'll have this grayish blue background, which looks very nice. We have some really good highlights in our materials. And I think this could be ready to render. 
and you can either um, hit the render preview button in order to get a quick preview of your animation, perhaps with timing and movement, for example, or if you're confident you're done with your animation, you can hit the render button and then under video, make sure that the right or correct video format is selected. If you'd like, you can also render out a PNG sequence, which, which you could add into your video software of choice and select the, the correct uh, resolution that you are going for and then send it off to the render queue. All right, that's it for this tutorial on animations in Titopia. I hope you learned something today. If you did, leave a comment down below and like and subscribe for more. And we'll see you soon.